I had been meaning to continue on with my coverage of Pixelmon and somebody did a lot of the legwork for me. So we're just going to go through this Twitter thread. It's some additional information on Pixelmon. I do believe they're going to hit on the actual start of the project and, and what you need to know to keep up to date. But if not, there are two videos that will link in the video description. They talk about Pixelmon, the NFT project, and how they raised $73 million dollars for some of the worst nfts i've ever seen and people calling it now a rug pull and the person behind the nft project turns out to be a 21 year old with absolutely no experience whatsoever in doing really anything because he's 21 years old he doesn't you know have the age to have experience in doing much of anything let alone handling a 73 million dollar project but this is from nft herder uh, on, on Twitter, he says, finished on-chain analysis of at Pixelmon NFT, below are the facts and my conclusion on how people paid three Ethereum for Unity stock models and who is Cyber, which is the guy who we now know is the 21 year old. So what the fuck is going on with Pixelmon? Before we start, know that this thread has limited space, so I'm only covering main issues. His analysis is going to cover the whole art reveal, what has been done with the funds and who is Cyber. I believe this is what came out before Cyber came forward and said, this is who I am and showed a picture of himself. So this was probably what forced his hand into revealing his identity, which of course he did, as all good liars do, in the name of transparency. After you've been outed for something, come out and talk about yourself and say, yes, I am in fact being transparent. So Pixmon was created by Cyber, who made big promises about amazing looking 3D art for his upcoming game. This made Pixelmon sell out their three Ethereum per NFT Dutch auction and generated 70 million in sales. No roadmap, no track record or reputation. Of course it sold out, what happened next? Now this is obviously something that's a big problem in the NFT space. Anonymous team with no roadmap, with no actual proof of concepts, no products or whatever, selling out for $70 million. And as far as I'm aware, there has been no speculation or on-chain reporting of bot accounts or wash trading or anything like that. There's been no uh, sketchy things going on. It looks like real people decided they were going to spend $10,000 each on something they didn't know what it was from someone who they didn't know who it was uh, for a product that doesn't currently exist, which is definitely a problem. So on this, he has a couple screenshots and... Of course, Cyber, Cyber, uh, amazing name if you've been around the internet for a long time, says on his Twitter on December 23rd, 2021, Pixelmon is the next blue chip. This is financial advice. Don't do your own research. Now, far be it from me to judge how other people spend their money, but if the leader of a project is telling you this project will be the next blue chip, which if you don't know blue chip stock, it's essentially meaning, you know, the good stocks saying that their NFT project's going to be the next blue chip, they would obviously call Board Ape Yacht Club and stuff like that, Pixel Punks, whatever they're called, I can't remember, uh, the, the Punk NFTs, stuff like that. They're classified as the blue chips, the ones that are really expensive, the ones that are abo above reproach at this point and are going to continue to do well uh, financially for the people that own them. Uh, he says, this is financial advice. Good one, guy. Uh, probably should not be saying things like that. Don't do your own research, of course, in pretty much all investing. Everyone always says, do your own research because they want to offload that responsibility onto you and say, I'm going to tell you something, uh, but, you know, still go and do your own research. Uh, and then he also says, just wanted to let you all know, I just got goosebumps seeing what our design and modeling team has come up with. Uh, bear in mind, as we're going to get into this, they didn't have a team. He was buying Unity Store assets for $50 per pack and then contacting the people who made those packs and con contracting them to make new assets for his project uh, with just cash without telling them that they're for NFTs, which I'm fairly sure most artists would have a problem with, as a lot of artists do not support NFTs due to the fact that their work is being used like this and stolen and sold as NFTs, and they get nothing back from it. This is a very common theme in the NFT space. So we are dropping something in four days that's going to put you all in the hospital. Stay tuned. Uh, and then if you look at what the NFTs really looked like when they actually came out, some people probably did get put in the hospital by the fact that they just lost 10 grand overnight. Welcome to Jurassic Park.
The reveal was Feb 16th, which they pushed to the 23rd because they needed, quote, additional time integrating metadata into OpenSea. However, you don't integrate metadata into OpenSea. That's not how it works. More likely, they needed time to make real assets. Now, there have been screenshots that have come out since then where somebody who made the Dragon assets for the Pixelmon NFT uh, collection, who, of course, again, didn't know they were going to be NFTs, has specifically said, I finished my work yesterday and the dates go back to being the day before Mint. Essentially, that shows that they didn't actually have the NFTs ready to, to go. They didn't have them ready to reveal based on what this creator, who has no reason to lie, uh, who had no idea what his artwork was going to be used for, has said to people that contacted him. So that's probably why they, they left the reveal for so long and had to delay it because they simply didn't have the assets made and they didn't have a team. They were just waiting for individuals to get back to them with things. He continues, eventually on the 25th, Pixmon revealed their true designs and oh lordy, I wish they didn't. I didn't even mint and I want my money back. Here's what buyers got. So as you can see, you have depressed uh, ape man, Kevin, which is a uh, uh, an amazing zombie interpretation, a literal penis, and a, I don't even know what that's going to be, a robot. And then you've got, of course, the invisible Pixamon that melted into the ground as if they've taken way too much acid. And sideways dragon. Fantastic. Uh, here is a side-by-side -side comparison. What was promised versus what was delivered. Some models even were straight up broken. Anyone asking $8,500 per NFT, knowing this is straight up scamming people, what's going on? So as you can see, the side-by-side -side comparison you're not getting what you paid for, right? And then he continues. Turns out he bought stock models by Mesh Tint Studio for 159 USD and converted them to voxel assets. As you can see here, uh, very, very clear that this is the exact same asset, right? Just It's just been ran through a voxel program, uh, which is something that people have been bringing up for a while. And the fact is that people in the NFT community are so horny for making money. They're so horny for doing things like this that they have... 8,384 likes on this tweet, 4,300 retweets, and nobody is, has found these assets and pointed out that you are posting art on your on your Twitter as like a hype that you've just bought in an asset pack. And, and let me just say, by the way, for legitimate developers out there, using asset packs is not like a, you know, it's not an affront to you. you you're not a scammer for using asset packs. That's what they literally exist to be used for for developers and small teams to get you know a leg start on a project or to bootstrap something together um to get things running maybe you don't have artists maybe you can't afford all original art and then maybe later on down the line you do intend to swap things out but when you're turning unity assets into nfts and then claiming you have a team making them that's a lie you're, you're then lying for for large sums of money which is of course where the problem lies in it being a scam whether or not you intend to later on down the line you know make everything right and deliver on things it makes no difference the intention of what you do later once you've got the money is irrelevant when you've lied to get said money that is for me grounds for being uh, actually called a scam um so as you can see here is one of the screenshots malba's animation uh, posted replying to cyber uh cyber basically asked where can i find the dragon he linked him the asset pack and he says oh yeah bought that yesterday so again more proof that he's been buying the packs he is also asking there on the 30th of december so bear in mind they've already got a lot of followers at this point they're already like a month away from mint how can i switch to a low poly dragon in the elemental callback scene don't need the adjustable sliders to work all i want the scene for is the attack jump and sleep buttons now bear in mind one key detail you need to understand about this project is that he's not supposed to be developing the project the whole idea of this is that they are uh, outsourcing the entire development of the game to another company, an actual legit development company that worked with companies like Activision, Disney, and things of that nature. So why would he need to know this if it wasn't for the fact that they'd not really done anything yet or had nothing to do with him raising this money or something else? There's a reason why he's doing this legwork and not the development studio. And I would like to know what that is. So if anyone from that studio is watching this, Feel free to contact me and let's have a chat about it. The Twitter thread moves on at this point. He then hired artist at, at Malba Short, who does not endorse NFTs, by the way, to work on them for less than the price of a single Pixel Mint. And Cyber never told the artist it was for NFTs. If he'd known, he probably wouldn't have done the work. Absolute scum behavior. Now we paid him, I believe, $6,000 for this, which to be fair, as an independent artist, this is probably a fairly good rate for the amount of work that he did. So I don't think the number is particularly uh, a problem or something we should really be stuck on or harping on about. 
He paid him $6,000 for making a couple of dragons. This guy sells asset packs on the store. I'm, I'm not going to speak for him and say that this is like an amazing payday or anything, but it seems like a fairly decent sum of money for the amount of work that he put in for these assets. And he obviously thought it was as well because he agreed to it and did the work. Of course, the problem here is the fact that he didn't tell him it was for an NFT project, which you should be told. If you're putting your name to something, if you're making something for somebody, you should really know what it's for. At least in my opinion, as an independent, I would like to know what it was, it was for. But maybe that's just coming from an idealistic view of it and me not understanding specifically how it works for independent artists and stuff like that. So some people even claim that Cyber copied the game from this indie game dev and used it as a base for his Pixelmon demo. So as you can see here, this is 409 games, uh, added some more wildlife and a river to the forest indie dev indie games game dev made with Unity. So as you can see, this does look very similar. I will have the footage uh, on screen for both the games and it does look incredibly similar. Uh, now he moves on and he starts talking about the money. Let's look at the money. It's all good. After apologizing, he promised to spend two mil and invest the money to fix the stock art he bought. However, the blockchain shows the first thing he did was spend 280 Ethereum on Board Ape Yacht Club, Azuki, and Clone X NFTs, swapped out 1.3 million, and sent another 13 Ethereum to an exchange. Now, obviously, at this point, this is his money, right? People bought NFTs from him, and the money is in a wallet that should be used for the game. But at the end of the day, you've you've bought NFTs from this guy. You can do what he wants with the money. I, however, don't think it, it looks good as a business to immediately be buying millions of dollars worth of NFTs with the money people sent you. Uh, I don't think you can constitute that as an investment. But then again, what do I know? I'm not an NFT expert. Uh, I'm not running multi-million dollar NFT scams on people. And the good thing about the blockchain in general is that we can look at things like this and you can see you can follow the money until a certain point. But as you can see here, he swapped money into USDC. Uh, if you don't know, USDC is a pegged stable coin, which essentially is always worth $1 each. So if you've got 1.3 million USDC, it's essentially $1.3 million. And then of course you can send that to an exchange, cash it out, whatever you want to do with it. Presumably if I had to guess and give you the most, uh, I guess, generous interpretation of this, maybe that $1.3 million is to pay the game dev studio that he's saying he's going to make this game for him. But he did give the interpretation, or at least on their website, he said that this game development studio was already working on the game for him. It wasn't an idea that if you give me the money, then we'll hire this studio. It was the studios making this game. So I wouldn't understand why he would need to immediately take out the money and pay them such a large sum of money, uh, because presumably they wouldn't have been working on, on the game for free this whole time, saying that, oh, you, when your NFTs eventually set, sell, we will then take uh, our payment, because that's not how game development studios work. And most game dev studios, at least in my experience, are completely against the idea of working with NFT companies or on blockchain games in general. So there's something a little bit weird about this as it relates to the game dev studio. I will be reaching out to some people who work there and see if I can get any kind of answers, but we'll have to wait and see if anything comes to fruition in terms of that. But again, don't take my word for it or the blockchain for it. He proudly admits this. And then he, of course, in the Discord says, market took a dip, so our dev team wallet purchased a few NFTs. Also, I'm not sure why the original Pixelmon wallet was sending out 42 free Pixelmon NFTs to random wallets. Could be nothing, could be something, but as far as I know, this wasn't announced. Not that it really matters since you don't own your Pixelmon NFTs anyways. Uh, that's because Pixelmon are fully centralized NFTs. The art and data is stored on their own site. Now, this is, of course, a very common thing among NFTs. A lot of people don't know, even people that own NFTs, that when an NFT is minted, 95% of the time, you know, a large percentage of the time, I don't have the actual numbers, the NFT is just a link to the picture and the picture is hosted somewhere else and it's simply metadata that points, it's a URL, it's, it's you're buying a token that says that you own a link to a picture, you're not buying the actual picture. So what this means is lots of things can happen with the actual picture, right? They can swap out the URL where it points to on their server. This one, for instance, is called Kevin.png. If they go on their server and change Kevin.png's file to something completely different, a picture of a penis, you know, a picture of anything, then literally your NFT is then going to point to that new picture. And what you own is, is just a token that used to be this thing and now is this new thing. Having them hosted on their own website means if this website goes down, all those NFTs, all those images are lost. All those images are gone unless somebody else then re-uploads them and then changes the metadata within the token to point to where the new picture is. 
Uh, essentially, you're buying nothing in, in this case because it's on their centralized website and not on any form of decentralized hosting service. And this is a very common thing in, in blockchain at the moment. It's very common to not host JPEGs on the blockchain because of how expensive it would be and data prohibitive to move those, those uh, JPEGs around on the internet. Only the very lowest of quality ones and some on certain blockchains are actually hosted on chain. And then he goes on to say, at least it's less bad than their OG collection, which was created using OpenSea storefront. Very amateurish and obviously anyone looking into this should have seen this and, and decided not to give them any money. And then he moves on to this, which is the most interesting part for me because I've covered Kickstarter scams on my channel for like three years now. And it's, it's where I've come from in terms of my coverage. And he says, who is cyber? Uh, taking a closer look, we find that he has a history of Kickstarters that have not delivered on their promises. Who'd have guessed? He kickstarted Alter Watchers, Psycho Chickens, and Slap the Deck, all flooded with complaints of never receiving the product. These are from as recent as a year ago. Uh, one of these reads, honestly, having one successful previous campaign doesn't mean very much at all. It isn't always new creators that take the money and run. I agree with other commenters. If you knew a month ago this wasn't going to work out the way you wanted, then you should have just cancelled then instead of letting everyone get hyped for it. Get it to 100% funding three weeks after launch and then to immediately abandon ship after that mark. It seems very suspicious. Having a previous campaign that resulted in a game that seems to have done quite well would have taught you about costs, needed supply and how to run a campaign. I find it very hard to believe you underestimated your cost by 500% and while I appreciate that you didn't take the money and run, I'm extremely disappointed. I personally wish I'd known last month you weren't interested in continuing because not only did I get excited for this game, but I was actively promoting it to others. So we didn't take the money from them. He didn't finish the campaign and then run away with the money. Now, if I was a cynical person, which I am, and somebody who followed Kickstarter quite a lot and followed Kickstarter scams and how people run Kickstarter scams, I might have a theory on precisely why he did this. And the theory would be, when you release a Kickstarter, you've got two options, right? You either put the money as a realistic goal and then risk not hitting said goal and not getting the money, or you put it at a lower goal to entice people to, to put money in because they think, oh, it's only, you know, X amount of $1,000, $10,000, even though you know it's going to cost $300,000, $500,000, something like that to make the game. And this is very common. And what you're hoping to do then is to basically get people to hype and FOMO in, buy into the Kickstarter, and then hopefully it gets to the number where you could actually deliver on a product. And obviously, if you're somebody who's not intending to actually run with people's money and maybe get le legal repercussions, but to actually get somebody to pay you to then do something, you put it at a lower amount, hope that it gets to a larger amount to the point where you could hire somebody else to do what you promised to do. It's very clear from his other discussion that we went through already in these screenshots that he's not very good at making things himself and he doesn't really know what he's doing. So this would tell me he wasn't intending to actually develop these games unless he got so much money that he could really just pay somebody out to do it and probably keep a lot of the money for himself. It seems like that's what he's done with Pixelmon as well. He's just basically acting like a middleman, take all the money off people for the hype and then pay some of it out to other people. And he's just made for life off the rest of the money that he can just do whatever he wants with as proven by purchasing those NFTs, which will probably as NFTs do go up in price and leave him set for life just from those, let alone the other $70 million that he has. That's how a lot of people run Kickstarters. I've seen it multiple times where companies or people put a product out there, say they need $5,000, it gets funded, but it gets like seven grand. Maybe they even put a lot of their own money in, by the way. This is another common thing that they do. They fudge the numbers. They It says five grand, they put two grand in themselves immediately. And other people look at it and go, wow, this is already 2,000 funded. Some people must have confidence in it. I'm going to put in my money. And then they don't want the campaign to actually finish because then they're going to get charged the two grand and then they're going to have to pay fees, etc., on it. And that means they're going to actually lose out on money as opposed to gain money, which is what they're going for. There's a lot of things you can do on Kickstarter, which a lot of people probably don't know about. But if you follow enough of these, you do get an eye for, for what people are doing to try and get as much money as possible from people. Then there is another Kickstarter here for Neon Chicken, where he says... Hello backers, hope you're having a great day. We, we've we had a few people contacting us regarding their order still not being delivered. We'll respond to your message over the next week. However, as it's been so long since orders were sent out, it is likely that any order that hasn't been delivered by now is lost in transit or still delayed at customs. As such, we'll be sending out replacements to orders that our tracking system shows are not delivered. So this is being alleged as a Kickstarter slow rug 
uh, slow rug is another term that people like using in the Kickstarter space. It's basically take people's money and don't immediately run away. Just like slowly bleed out. Just pretend that you're doing stuff. You know, just pretend you've done something and just wait and hope that people stop caring about it. The worst being Slap the Deck, where he got it 100% funded, but after receiving the funds, rugged because the funds he calculated weren't enough to begin with. Like, what the actual fuck? Now, bear in mind, I went through this person's LinkedIn. He registered two companies. I found the companies he registered. I found the social media for the companies he registered. This person at 21 years old is a perpetual scammer. He is a perpetual starter of projects. He probably calls himself a serial entrepreneur, which a lot of these people do, where they just start things and they repeatedly do it to try and earn as much easy money as possible from doing as little work as humanely possible. So here you go. This is a bit of an at-odds uh, screenshot, right? On October 20th, 2020, it says 100% funded. We are 100% funded, uh, party face, you know, party emoji. And then he posts another update on November 19th, 2020. This is why we were not funded. Thanks to everyone's support though. Sorry for the lack of communication and confusions we have caused. We deliberately canceled all marketing efforts and didn't push or promote this campaign after our first couple of weeks. This is why we're not fully funded in hindsight. We should have just canceled the campaign. Now, as you can see here, Slap the Deck was not actually funded. They didn't get this one funded, but they did link to it from their successfully funded Psycho Chickens, where they raised 74,000 New Zealand dollars, which by the way is 51,000 USD. So he raised 51,000 USD for Psycho Chickens and allegedly didn't deliver on, on at least most of the products. And if you go to the comments section of Psycho Chickens, you can see people posting six days ago, it's 2022, still nothing. Uh, time to get spamming on any new projects you're doing. Just wondering about any in the same situation. How many folks are waiting for their pledges or missing slash replacement pledges? Bear in mind, this was funded in, I believe, early 2021. There are dozens, perhaps even hundreds of comments complaining about not receiving their pledges that people paid for. So at this point, this is a history that this individual has for scamming people. A 21-year-old with a history for scamming people for multiple years now. When he released that, he would have been, what, 19, 20 years old? How many times is this person going to scam people? And why do people still believe that he's going to deliver as a perpetual scammer on a amazing new product that's that's going to have $73 million used properly in the way that you would expect the money raised for a game to be used? Uh, it's just not realistic. Uh, so when you follow the trail of failed Kickstarters, you'll find his full name and address. Not really any detective work since he willingly doxed himself to become a Minecraft streamer. Now, I'm not going to show that for obvious reasons, but as with most people who are scammers, uh, not that intelligent to be scamming people for $73 million. Meanwhile, all of your prior information is listed on scams that you've already perpetuated. Somebody will eventually talk. And like I say, with blockchain, people can follow the money. They can see what you're doing with it. And they've found you now and they're going to find what you do with the money. And if you scam somebody for a million dollars and everyone loses a hundred dollars each, way less chance that anything happens to you. If you scam people for millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, yeah, you're probably getting into the territory where somebody's going to look at this and you might in fact be one of the people who gets caught with your hand directly in the cookie jar. So coincidentally, Pixelmon mod is a very popular Minecraft mod that lets you capture, breed and evolve Pokemon. Sound familiar? Now, this is one of those things. Whenever I post videos about Pixelmon, people say, what, the Minecraft mod? No, this is, of course, what he's taken his idea from. According to this, he was a Minecraft streamer and he's taken a Minecraft mod and basically just ripped the idea straight off and made a, a an NFT project and then just paid for smart assets from Unity Store and Unity developers and then sold them for $73 million. There's something severely wrong with the NFT marketplace. By the way, that cool banner used on Cyber's Minecraft page was created by an artist for YouTuber Mogi the Great. Seems like he simply removed Mogi's name and didn't give credit to the artist and owner, which also sounds familiar. That's crazy. That's so crazy that, that somebody who has ripped people off repeatedly would also steal art from somebody. That's wild. Cyber has no track record in blockchain, NFTs, or game dev, yet promised an amazing Pokemon clone game and somehow convinced Solidity devs, Delta developers to get on board. I assume they didn't do their due diligence. However, some people say the devs knew. So this is a screenshot. It's a reply from somebody saying, so is Cyber just a one-man show or not? And he said, Cyber does not have a fucking team. Link proof. It's him. I tried to help him, but he denied. I still am helping him so people can get their fucking money's worth back. He cannot run this business. He is inexperienced. I do not want to run it. It needs to go to someone who can. He then says, dude, you need to go hire a team now. A team, please. Okay, yes, that's good. And then Cyber replies, it's not that easy. I've been looking for a team for weeks. Okay, I'll post that. Yeah, this is very blatant proof that he literally has no idea what he's doing. People that are still within his community, by the way, of which there are many, many thousands of people 
that have been brainwashed into thinking if we just lie if we just stick our heads in the sand if we just tell everyone that what they're hearing and what they're seeing these facts that are being provided are just for their fear the, the their uncertainty and their doubt then maybe we'll get our money back we'll get our nine ten thousand dollars back from the nft mints and we'll be made whole don't worry this 21 year old he's going to do it right he's going to he's going to help us all out we're all going to be good we're all going to make a profit right realistically at this point if you read all this if you see all this and if you've been scammed by this but you are still perpetuating this narrative that everything's okay this person isn't a scammer this person is is going to have everyone's back then i would be comfortable saying that you are an accessory to this you are culpable in what this developer you know developer what this person is doing because you are selling people on the lie that all of this is not out there for you to just go look at and you are helping other people to get involved in something that has a very high chance of them losing money purely because you want to make your money back which I think is pretty immoral, to be honest. So Cyber earned 70 million by buying cheap stock Unity assets, converting them to voxel assets, making a one-page website, got Delta developers on board for a percentage share, and selling them for three Ethereum per NFT. He has no team, there is no game, this kid has no idea what he's doing, but if you're crying because you're one of the people he bought at three Ethereum and are now sitting on $7,366 loss per NFT, maybe this video of Cyber crying IRL eases the pain a little may want to save it before he deletes it i won't be looking at that i won't be opening that uh, it's not really relevant to anything i care about so there you go that is the thread written by okhotshot.eth nft herder on twitter really good write-up really well put together some points that i wouldn't have personally put in there but obviously everyone has a different take on things like this and it just goes to show literally anybody can do this as long as you have no moral compass whatsoever as long as you value money over everything else you can scam people in nfts it's not that difficult i think almost anybody who's competent at all can do something like this and not gonna lie guys the the law of 73 million dollars that's generational wealth 73 million dollars by a 21 year old who has no fucking clue what he's doing he used unity assets and then you wonder why people are working you know 60 hours a week working two jobs to try and make ends meet just doesn't really make a lot of sense does it but there you go uh, a lot of us don't do that purely for the reason that we have ethics we have morality we don't want to be scammers but that is pixel on the journey so far and i'm sure there will be updates on this as there always are it always gets more ridiculous when stuff like this is involved and the money is going to go somewhere it's going to be used on something and i can't wait to see the finished product so thank you very much leave a like leave a comment subscribe if you enjoy the content and i'll see you next time stay safe we out peace mm -hmm.